Police have started to stop members leaving Attila's gym here in Belmar. One man arrested today after he says he questioned police when they asked for his name. This guy's being arrested. Belmar police stepping in and arresting this man. He says when he asked police why they needed his name, he was cuffed, taken to the station and issued two citations. One for violating the governor's orders and the other for obstruction. We live in a communist country. Instead of arresting everybody else, come and arrest us in public. A handful of other members were stopped by police today, leaving the gym and asked for their information. Co-owners Frank Trombetti and Ian Smith say they expect those members will receive citations in the mail. When people say United We Stand, this is a perfect example of it. And I'm, I'm proud of our community and sticking up for it. It's, it's not just Ian and I, it's every person that's going in there. Is actually fighting for the rights, and every person is out here is fighting for the rights also. There's your complaint. The two opened this morning for the second day in a row. They were also issued a second set of citations themselves this morning by Belmar Police. Their response to that? Thank you, Mr. Officer. I'll see you tomorrow. We asked members what their thoughts were. Are you afraid of being arrested for being inside? I'm not afraid, but I'm prepared. Governor Murphy and State Police Colonel Pat Callahan stating the Camden County Prosecutor's Office is now involved and that gyms aren't next on the list to open. We're not there on gyms. Let me just be unequivocal about that. If we were there, we'd be telling you uh, it's indoors. It's a lot of physical activity, close proximity. Police also dealing with crowd control today, asking those who wanted to protest to do so from their vehicles. One woman tells us she was cited for organizing a protest. In Belmar, Camden County, Erica Such, News 12, New Jersey. This apartment complex is still on fire at this time. You can see now heavy flames pouring out of the third, fourth, and fifth floors of this apartment complex. We are told that this is the Linwood Park apartment complex. And if there is any promising news here, it is this. They have contained this to this one building. What you're seeing here is actually two buildings, but they have contained it to just this one. And yes, everyone has been evacuated. And what we're hearing now are now horns telling all firefighters to get out if they were inside. They're giving the all clear to make sure it is clear because this will be a complete loss. We're only seeing right now one hose. And there it is again. just heard telling all these firefighters to back out, back off, because this will be a loss. They have pretty much given up because it is out of control this time, and they're going to now let this burn and get everyone out to make sure everyone is safe. We have been told by fire officials that this started around 4.15 in the afternoon in the basement of this apartment complex. The cause is not yet known. Immediately, they started firing, fighting this from the ground as well as the roof, but it has gotten out of control to this point. We can tell you we spoke to one victim, a man who was just inside or going about business as usual. This is what he had to say to us earlier. I read some newspapers, watching TV, at Four o'clock, I hear fire alarm. So the alarms went off? Oh, loud. Okay. When you walked out, was the hallway filled with smoke? Completely. Okay. Did you have an easy time getting out, or did you have to help others? I have to run, run away. This was an early afternoon shooting. We've learned that one man was shot by police on this street. This is Ravenscrest Drive, and we're on the grounds of the Ravenscrest condominium complex in Plainsboro. At this hour, police are still collecting evidence. If you can look past the yellow tape there, you'll see they're focused on one spot in particular, a police car belonging to the Plainsboro PD. On the ground all around that vehicle, well, there is evidence everywhere. We spotted shell casings from a gun being fired, a knife, wire believed from a taser that was discharged, as well as a bag and jacket jacket and handcuffs. Now this incident took place at two locations within this condo complex. It ended here in the street, but it's believed to have started at a residence where the male victim was living. That residence is just around the corner down the sidewalks from where we're standing. We are now waiting to find out what precipitated this and the extent of injuries to those involved. We did speak with a neighbor whose home provided a perfect view of what was happening here. He's hearing that the incident may have been related to an eviction. I hear like five or so shots all at once. There was no screaming nor, nor, nor noise, like the guy was completely silent after that, as far as I could hear. As is the case with any police involved shooting, the state attorney general's office will take over this investigation and they will look into the use of force and whether or not it was justified. Later on tonight, we're hoping to hear more as to whom was involved and the name of the suspect who was shot. 
We're in Plainsboro tonight. I'm Chris Keating, News 12 New Jersey. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! They came from across Monmouth County and beyond. First standing and then marching side by side. Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Hundreds showed up outside the Asbury Park Post Office for the Monday night protest. The crowd spilling into the parking lot in front of the police station in City Hall. Go, go, go. At one point in a moment of solidarity caught on camera, local police officers and sheriff's officers got down on one knee alongside protesters to honor George Floyd. This is uh, very serious and uh, that type of brutality, it's got to end. It's got to stop now because it could have been me or anybody else could have been you. I feel it's important that they know what's going on and that they're part of the, a positive change and that they stand up for the rights of people who have not as loud of a voice as we do. Jamie Sanders of Manasquan brought her three kids to teach them the importance of speaking for those who cannot, but also knowing how other protests like this one ended, stayed in the back, ready to leave just in case things got violent. We just hope that people use their heads and people don't come to just to cause destruction. Those people are not part of the movement. Frank Rongo's story started right here in Hoboken at what used to be known as the A.J. Demarest High School. Now here we are 70 years later and he is finally getting his chance to walk across the graduation stage. This arm will go right in here. Okay. It was all pomp and circumstance for the Rongo family this afternoon as their patriarch, also a veteran, Francis Anthony Rongo, suited up for graduation. Make sure that this stays on the right because you're going to flip it to the left. Frank Rongo should have graduated high school 70 years ago in 1951. However, when his father became ill and passed away, Frank decided to drop out of high school and start working to help make ends meet. For my mom, I, I, you know, I felt good about it for helping her the way I, I could. This was kind of, if you want to call it a regret potentially, it wasn't my dad's that, you know, he had a sacrifice graduating high school back 70 years ago to take care of his family and put food on the table. Last February, Frank's grandson, Robert Bost, reached out to the Hoboken School District and simply shared his grandfather's story in hopes of getting a response and an opportunity to write a regret. Every year for the last, uh, I guess, 29 years, my grandpa here was uh, telling me how much he regretted having to leave high school. He served his country, he worked hard his whole life, just never had the opportunity to go back and actually finish it. Mr. Rongo was a proud product of the Hoboken Public School District. Dr. Christine Johnson, the superintendent of schools for the Hoboken Public School District, obliged and agreed to award Frank an honorary high school diploma. We wanted to do this last year for him, but with COVID, we just weren't able to. I did it! In a lot of ways, the resilience that Mr. Rongo had for all these years back then and now, it's kind of very similar to what the kids went through this year. And so what a great year to give an honorary high school diploma. It's fitting to do it. And on Father's Day, Frank got the big news that at 86 years old, he'd finally be a high school graduate. The commencement ceremony is this Friday. No one deserves this more than you do it. Oh my God. <laughs> Frank, who also battled COVID this year, had the honor of graduating with Hoboken High School's class of 2021, a class that faced its own challenges because of the pandemic. In the end, the class of 2021 and a graduate from the class of 1951 shared a story of resilience. Oh, he is I'm just a definition. Up just listening to it. I know, I know. He's a definition of determination, Naomi. Uh, so what's next for him? So he joked that he might go to college, but what he definitely plans to do before the summer is out is go skydiving with his grandson. And I already told him, I said, hey, you all call me when you go do that because I want to be there to witness it. How much is the sweatshirt? Underneath the piles of clothing and toys in these shopping carts. Are you going to do clothes or toys? Lies two very important lessons. So you're going to go out and you're going to buy the best and as much as you can buy. That's Mrs. Fisher's fourth grade class from Milford Brook in Manalapan. Well, I think we actually should get this. Thing. And their assignment for the day. That one looks cool. All right, should we get this one? Yeah. Is to shop. Not for themselves, but for less fortunate students in their own school community. It makes me feel um, good doing stuff for people. The money donated from students' families through fundraisers and spare change programs, this year raising close to $1,000. Those gifts.
gifts all going to families on the school district's free and reduced lunch list that agreed to participate. As a counselor, I think it fosters kindness in students and an understanding of needs of others. It brings the whole school together. So some of the children can't have what we have today, and they deserve to have the stuff too. The fourth graders then are given wish lists to shop from and a budget. 97, so I don't know if we're going to get this. They're learning two lessons here, essentially, not just giving back, but also math. It's a life lesson because you have to know how to shop and you have to, they have to estimate. So $15 plus 15. Calculate how much money they can spend. And we can buy this. We have $11 left. They learned how to do sale prices and calculate the money. So it's a great lesson for them to learn. 7-0 times, times three. three. Calculators and parents are also there to help crunch the numbers if needed to. Let's figure out the rope, guys. How much is the rope? $12. The biggest item on the list, kindness. That doesn't come with a price tag. I can't even put words on it. It To me, it's just so awesome and so heartfelt. You never know when you're going to be that person in need. And I've had families who've given, and then we're on the other side of it. So it's really nice to know that they have support if they need it.